decorated. It is said that a person is great if he is decorated with the qualities of being very merciful toward the unfortunate, very powerful, superior, chivalrous, enthusiastic, expert, and truthful. These decorations were manifested in the character of Krishna during his Govardhan Leela. At that time, the whole tract of land in Vrindavan was being disturbed by the rain sent by Indra, as described elsewhere. At first, Krishna thought, let me retaliate against this vengeance of Indra by destroying his heavenly kingdom. But later on, when he thought of the insignificance of the king of heaven, Krishna changed his mind and felt merciful toward Indra. No one is able to tolerate the wrath of Krishna. So instead of retaliating against Indra, he simply showed his compassion for his friends in Vrindavan by lifting the whole Govardhan hill to protect them. This is a wonderful story. Uh, generally, the cowherd men used to offer a sacrifice to Krishna. Uh, I'm sorry, to Indra. So Krishna requested his father, Nanda Maharaj, to offer the, the sacrifice to Govardhan Hill instead. Because he was saying, after all, Govardhan Hill is the, the one that actually supplies us with uh, grasses and nice streams of water and so many other good things, herbs and caves and all kinds of nice things. So instead of offering Indra puja, let's offer Govardhana puja. So they made a hill of grain. Yeah, get that out of the way. They made a hill of grains. And uh, then they decorated the cows very nicely and worshipped the cows and the hill, uh, like that. And, and devotees still do this today. Uh, we've seen that um, they'll take a whole bunch of grains, rice and, and dal and uh, barley and oats and all kinds of grains and make a big hill of them. Uh, and if there are cows available, that they'll decorate the cows. Uh, you take you take the red mud, huh? And you you mix it on your hands, and you make hand prints on the cows. Uh, they like this very much. Uh, and uh, put garlands on the cows, and uh, put uh, decorate their horns with gold leaf. You've seen this. It's very nice. So. Uh, Govardhan Puja. Uh, but Indra didn't like this at all. So he sent, he didn't send just an ordinary rain cloud. He sent the Samvartaka cloud, which is used at the time of universal devastation. <laughs> so it was raining, it wasn't just raining, it was pouring down columns of water, described like the legs of an elephant. Huh? That thick columns of water coming down from the sky. So Indra thought he was going to get revenge against the cowherd men, but instead Krishna just lifted up Govardhan Hill and he held it on the little finger of his right hand for seven days. Uh, the whole time it was raining, pouring like that, but nothing affected the cowherd men and the gopis and the cows because they were under Krishna's protection. So Krishna, this is his character that when uh, a devotee becomes dear to Krishna by offering different kinds of service, then Krishna always protects that devotee. And even if there's some interference by other people, uh, even other devotees, uh, Krishna will actually save that devotee, save his servant, uh, and uh, deliver him. Uh, so another quality is enjoying. When a person is seen to be always happy and is accustomed to speak smilingly, he is considered to be in the mode of enjoyment. This trait was found in Krishna when he appeared at the sacrificial arena of King Kangsa. It is described that the lotus-eyed Krishna entered among the wrestlers without being impolite to them, glanced over them with determination, and seemed to them just like an elephant attacking some plants. 
Even while speaking to them, Krishna was still smiling, and in this way he stood valiantly upon the wrestling dais. So this is Krishna. Krishna is all-powerful, and he is so confident. Uh, he's always in enjoying mood. And because of this, all the ladies of Mathura were very attracted to him. Uh, he's a great hero. He's never defeated. Uh, and he doesn't, he doesn't even get angry <laughs> when someone is there attacking him. Uh, Krishna was angry at Kangsa, but he wasn't angry at the wrestlers. After all, they hadn't done anything to him. Uh, so he gave them a chance, you know, he challenged them. And he said, you know, if you don't, if you want to fight with me, okay, you know, but I'm going to send you to the Amaraj. So, uh, but he was smiling. He was dressed very nicely, and he was smiling in the wrestling arena and going, well, you know, I'm going to send you all to hell, but, well, I guess we've got to do this, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's Krishna. Pleasing. When one's characteristics are very sweet and desirable, his personality is called pleasing. An example of Krishna's pleasing nature is thus described in Srimad Bhagavatam. One day, while Krishna was awaiting the arrival of Srimati Radharani by the bank of the Jamuna, he began to make a garland of kadamba flowers. In the meantime, Srimati Radharani appeared there, and at that time, Murari, Krishna, the enemy of Mura, glanced over Radharani very sweetly. So yeah, this, see these all describe, this is, before we were describing like Krishna's individual qualities, and now we're describing the characteristics of his personality, which is on a little bit higher level, uh, that all of these qualities of Krishna combine together, and he uh, has a very pleasing effect on his devotees. Uh, that, that when Krishna comes to us in response to our devotional service, then we become so pleased by his personal qualities that well, we forget about everything else. <laughs> we just want to hang out with Krishna and serve him and enjoy his company because Krishna is so pleasing. Uh, that's really what the name Krishna means. Krishna means the highest pleasure or the abode of everything enjoyable. I mean, he's the origin of all wonderful things. Everything enjoyable is coming from him. Uh, all the things that we cherish and enjoy and value, they're all coming from Krishna. Krishna is the source of all of them, and he has unlimited potency of enjoyment. So when we uh, associate with Krishna, it's always very pleasurable, very, very enjoyable. Uh, just like this weekend of this festival that we had. We were chanting, it seemed like, day and night, huh? so many, almost 24 hours a day. And yet, even though our bodies were tired, that we never got tired of the, of the chanting. And we just wanted to chant more and more and more. You know? And uh, we wish that our material bodies weren't such a limitation, so that we could serve Krishna more, because the more we serve him, the more he reciprocates, and the more transcendental pleasure we experience. So. Uh, we can just imagine the condition of the residents of Vrindavan. Uh, they're so attached to Krishna that any separation from Krishna is just intolerable for them. Uh, so uh, even though Krishna is there in their hearts, they want to see Krishna's form. Uh, they want to see him in his beautiful threefold bending form. Tribhanga Shyama Sundar. Because uh, he's so pleasing. Dependable. Any person who is reliable in all circumstances is called dependable. In this connection, Rupa Goswami says that even the demons were relying upon the dependability of Krishna because they were confident that Krishna would never attack them without due cause. Therefore, with faith and confidence, they used to live with their doors wide open. And the demigods, although afraid of the demons, were confident of the protection of Krishna. Therefore, even in the midst of danger, they were engaged in sportive activities. Persons who had never undergone the reformatory ritualistic ceremonies of the Vedas were confident that Krishna would accept only faith and devotion, 
And so they were engaged in Krishna consciousness and were freed from all anxieties. In other words, all kinds of men, from the demigods down to the uncultured, can rely on the causeless mercy of the Supreme Lord. So this is a very good point. Even though, for example, we Western devotees have not gone through the different samskaras of Vedic life, by performance of devotional service, we are able to become purified and engaged in Krishna consciousness. Because the, the reformatory processes of the Vedas are more or less on the level of karma kanda. Karma kanda means performing material activities for pious, fruitive results. Most of the Vedas preach this karma 